our lo loving Father, everlasting Lord, we give you all the glory once again. We give you all the praise. We acknowledge the fact that you are in our midst and you are behind all the breakthroughs and the blessings and the exploits and the miracles. We thank you that you put testimonies in our mouths every day. We give you all the glory for your good hand that is upon us. And we thank you, Father, that you have been our defense against every satanic harassment, any satanic move against our lives. Therefore, we are saying thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, mighty Holy Spirit. Once again, you have guided us unto you on Mount Zion. Spirit of the living God is over to you. Speak to us. Bless us with the understanding of your word. Let your word transform us. Let your word lift us up. Bless everyone sitting here, Lord. Bless the multitude you have brought before you this morning. Let everyone that meets us after this service testify that we have had an encounter with you. Let your name alone be glorified. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Last week, by the Spirit of God, we titled what we call the wisdom of God's love. The wisdom of God's love. And we came to understand that without true love for God, frustration, anxiety, hardship will not stop. Because everything works on the platform of love. And we, have, we were also made to understand that you can do all that you want to do. Without love, it profits nothing. Without love, it's in vain. So everything we are doing must be done out of the love we have for God. We don't do anything for show. We don't do anything for people to think we are better or good. We don't do anything to prove anything to anybody. But we do it because we love God. We do it because we are in love with Him. We do it because we appreciate Him in our lives. That is the motivation behind everything we do as the children of God. And God has made us to understand that I will love them that love me. And so when you love God, you can be sure of the love of God for you. And I said last week that what God is saying here is different from for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That is what we call the general love of God. God loves everybody. But there is a level, there is a degree of love that God showers it on only those that love him. Praise the Lord. Amen. God loves everybody in the world, yet people die of terrible accidents, tra I mean tragedies here and there, terrible sicknesses, yet God loves them. But because they are not loving God, they cannot benefit from that love of God that forbids that anything touches you. They cannot benefit from the love of God that forbids that you suffer poverty. They cannot benefit from the love of God that forbids that any devil does any wrong thing towards you and get away with it. Yet God loves everyone. And so you have to understand that there, are, there is a, a, a level, there is a degree of the love of God we are, I mean, God is talking about here when he said, I love those that love me. I love those that love me. I love those that love me. And we saw a lot of good examples in the Bible, in the person of Abraham, in the person of David, in the person of uh, Joseph. I mean, we saw all these people loving God. And so all the, the, the negative things that came their life turned out to be good. Because God loved them. Praise the Lord. Amen. 
David is one of the major example who loved God so much. So that when he came to God, David was like a crazy man. And God looked at him and said, this is a man after my own heart. Not because he never committed sin, not because he never did anything wrong, but because his heart for God was so big. He loved God. I mean, God testified about the love of David for him. He told Solomon, I will bless you and increase your kingdom if you will walk with me like your father David did. So God was testifying about the fact that David walked with him. To the very end, he walked with God because of his heart for him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so love is the basis on which everything works. On which everything works. On which everything works. This thing must always be in our memory that love is the basis on which everything works. On which everything works. That is why I said it here that even in your giving, tithes and offering and seed sowing, if it is not out of your love for God, please hold it. God is not broke. God doesn't need money. God is not paying laborers in heaven. He is not paying mortgage for the golden road in heaven. God doesn't need money. God needs your heart. And so he said, my son, give me your heart. And when you have given your heart to him, then you can put your money in his hands and then he will bless it and increase it in your own life. So he doesn't need money. God doesn't buy anything. God doesn't pay for anything. He made everything. Are you understanding me? So it has to be by love for him to accept it. Now, this is what happens. If you don't love God and you are giving to him, it is like you are playing gambling game with God. Give and take. You know when you go to the casinos, you see how they, they play the game. You know, if you are very smart, you put $1,000 down and you'll be able to make $1 million. And that's, that's the same thing a lot of people are trying to do with God. So they don't love God, but okay, I have heard that, you know, if I bring the tithe, uh, the blessings are coming. So God, here, this is it. Let's play the game. I put a tie down. Let me see the blessing flowing. That's how a lot of people are, I mean, behaving in the church. But God does not need money. He needs your heart. And when your heart has been given to him, then everything you put in his hands, he blesses it. God delights in blessing you and I. When we are working with him and allowing him to bless us, he is delighted because he wants to see his children blessed. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And when God blesses you, everything must work in your life. Because blessing is not limited to cash, as a lot of people have been made to believe. So that anytime they hear God is going to bless you, then they are thinking of how much God is going to give them. But when we are talking of the blessing of God, it's a force released from heaven. It's released upon your life that makes everything works for good. That makes everything that your heart touches move in a positive way. Praise the Lord. Amen. And so when God says, I'm going to bless you, it means he said that I'm going to release that force upon you. So that where people are struggling, you just, you just break through sweatlessly. Where people are saying it is hard, you get there and the force of the blessing is at work upon you. You know, so that is how God wants to make our lives. But there are some conditions that you and I must fulfill. And the number one condition is loving God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Loving God. Loving God. Loving God. Loving God, love.